Well, howdy again. It's Mr. Peach, your YouTube shop teacher, and welcome aboard. Now, today's video, and it might be more than one part, I really don't know when I start a video, it revolves around the Boyce Crane 14 inch model 2300 uh, bandsaw, vertical bandsaw. It's really a combination wood cutting, metal cutting. It has quite a hefty gearbox in it, but I use it mainly for metal cutting and I've enjoyed this machine. I did tell you in, in another video that I had to rebuild it and put new wheels. They were Bakelite wheels originally because I believe it was made during the war. This thing's probably 70 years old, but uh, it's really aggravated me lately and the aggravation comes from the blade guides. And uh, let's take a closer look at them and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is the upper blade guide. Of course there's a lower blade guide and I probably will not make one and if I do I probably won't even show that because it'll be just more of the same. But on the upper, get out of there, blade guide here, it's just in bad condition. I'm going to take it off. It's held on by two screws. And before I go on I would like to say and I don't want this to be a criticism, but some of the you guys out there that are making shop videos and other kinds of videos, you know, you've got to use good lighting. Some of you do it in the dark with a handheld camera that's just moving all around. It's just no good at all. you got to have a tripod and you can't get enough light. A word to the wise is sufficient. Now let me take that off and lay it here and you'll get a little bit better idea of why I'm replacing it. But you know, it just, well I got one screw loose, I mean it wouldn't normally wobble that much. But just anything that could be the matter with this is, uh, it's just bad. And uh, you can see it's got two side guides and then a ball bearing in the back. It's pretty much the way all blade guides are built. Now this guide also has one of the guides here at an angle. And of course the purpose of that is so that I can tilt the table. I never have tilted the table in 15 years so I'm not going to bother with this at an angle which just makes it more complicated. Both guides, hardened guides, will just come in from the side and pinch the blade. Alright now I will take it off. I hope I didn't make you mad with my little harangue about lighting, but sometimes I have to turn certain people's videos off because they're so poorly lit. So, there it is. Okay, what's so wrong with this guide? Well, it is brilliantly designed, but it is really way, way too complicated. Now, it's made out of zinc. Some of you call it pot metal. And it has adjustments both to move uh, the back bearing in and out and to move uh, this set of guides in and out depending on what width blade you're using. Because if you're using an eighth inch blade, I've never used one in my life, I just uh, vary between three eighths and half inch. But in order not for the blade to run into the teeth and strip the teeth, you have to move it back behind the teeth and then the back bearing here also has to be adjusted in and out. And that's what all of this mechanism is. But part of the problem here is that this casting here, die cast, is broken. Well, it was probably broken when Truman was still in office. Someone did repair it by drilling and moving the hole down a little bit. That would have been the original hole. You can see some of the, the barks here, but it isn't sturdy and it, it will self-destruct. That probably broke not from somebody dropping it, but from somebody over tightening this and, uh, and snapping it off. So that anyway, that was done a long time ago and you, you can see what moves in and out here, but it's just very sloppy. And it's it's just outmoded. So I want to get rid of it. You know, I don't throw things like this away. I will hang it inside the cabinet so the next owner can put it back on should he have a notion. And I wouldn't even begin to try to duplicate this as it is because there are square holes. This would just be very tough to make out of solid stock. 
the lower one similar. I may show it later on, and I may not. But this is what I'm going to replace, but with a much simpler design. Now let me digress. Bear with me, and in a minute you'll see why I'm talking about Peterson products, and I know you're getting sick of hearing about Peterson products, but back long before I was even in my prime, one of the projects out of the 10 projects was a 10-inch bandsaw, so that's a 10-inch wheel, and remember I was selling not the bandsaw, I was selling to other teachers the patterns, and I've talked about that in many other videos, but here is a finished one, and this is the original artwork, and I do use the term artwork loosely, but this was set up for photographing here, and you can see we also made the stand and the, and the covers, and it's got a motor on it, and in fact I used one of these in the basement here as my primary bandsaw for many, many, many years when I also manufactured the Peterson product micrometer teaching aid. So anyway, that's what I'm talking about here. These pictures probably taken in 1971 or so. And again, there's the patterns there. And in the other artwork, I painted the patterns uh, gray so they would show up because you can see they don't really show up. But there it is with the covers open and you can see that of course there are a set of blade guides, upper and lower. Here are the patterns again. And that's what I was actually selling along with complete directions. I have shown this picture before, but I think I was in the picture. I had to cover my face. I was so ashamed. But this was my complete product line, and there again is the 10-inch bandsaw. And it worked quite well, but it was not an easy project for the kids. It was for the advanced kids, and we probably made 50 of those over the years between the early 70s and the late 80s when they closed out the shop at my high school and we threw everything away. There were five pages of blueprints for this. And the reason I'm showing you this is here's the blade guides. These alone were kind of a difficult project for the kids, but essentially this is what I'm making now today. That's why I'm going through all of this. And it's a, it's a rather simple design, but yet, you know, there's a lot of dimensions here. And this wasn't easy for a 16-year-old child. And yes, I mean a child. All right. I'm not going to talk about this anymore other than you're going to see some similarity here between this and what I'm doing in this video. All right. Back to the business at hand. This was my complete product line, if you want to call it that. And this was one of the earlier ones when I before I moved to the town I'm in now. But there were nine projects at this time. And there is the bandsaw. I've shown this before. Some of you are sick of seeing it. But then there's always some people that have not seen the earlier videos. They wonder, what are you talking about? So that's why I'm repeating myself. What most normal people would do is they'd sit down in front of their computer with Fusion 360 and they would start designing this, but you know that I make things mainly by the seat of my pants, so just using this as a, as a general idea for some dimensions, what I'm going to do is make a wooden model, which I often do. It could be plastic, could even be foam or something like that, because often I have to make several of them. Well, here's a nice piece of maple that came from the high school, so I've had this for 30 years. I pulled it out of the, uh, the dumpster. I told you that I walked by the dumpsters on the way to the office from the shop every day. So I checked everything out. This was some piece of athletic apparatus. You know, there was an unlimited budget to buy that kind of uh, material around the school. So they threw one out that wasn't too old. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, I cut off a piece, and it's still way too big. But I like to work with hardwood rather than just a 2x4 because I can saw it, I can mill it, I can drill it, and uh, so on. There will be no threads in it, but it. it is what I would call a mock-up. A mock-up. Reverse engineering. All right. I'm not trying to fool anybody, but last night while you were sleeping and I couldn't, I did run through the whole thing here and made a very rough copy 
of the way I'm going to do it. But already I wish to make many changes and I knew that there would be more than one prototype. So I'm basically going to start over again with a blank piece of wood and show you how, essentially how I made this. And even number two is not going to be the uh, probably the final one because I can make uh, more changes when I convert from wood to metal. And uh, also, I know I'm going to get comments right away, of, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Well, for several reasons. First of all, because I didn't think of it. Secondly, there are unlimited possibilities here for design. You could use three ball bearings instead of one. You could use no ball bearing. Just all kinds of, of ideas. And if you look at some of the other blade guides, perhaps on your deltas, and the various machines that you might have, and probably the woodworking machines have a lot of good ideas as well, although some of those were built a little bit lighter. All right. The guide is mounted onto this piece. By the way, this whole thing raises up and down, I think. It doesn't raise up and down, it raises up and it moves down. So anyway, that's three-eighths wide. So I already took this piece of maple, and you know what, I'm not sure this maple is maple, it might be beech. Look at the grain. Some of you wood butchers out there would know better than I, but anyway, since this is three-eighths thick, I milled a three-eighths slot. See how nice that mills? And by putting that in the slot like that, you see, I have to have a, a, a slot here for the blade. The blade's in the way, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to turn the machine on and just mark that. A slot which allows me to position this and mount it up here like that I'm in the groove so I'll take a quarter inch transfer punch here and you, you probably can't see all of this but on the back side here I will transfer this hole quarter inch take it over and drill it and then I will also do the same to this hole I like to do one at a time so I'm darn sure they'll line up Let's talk about this back bearing. It's probably bigger than what we need, what I need, so I'm going to use a little bit smaller bearing, and I looked through my bearing selection, you, see, you know that I have hundreds of bearings, and this particular bearing here, well look, I have two tubes of them, that is I have 20 of them, that is a three lifetime supplies because they last a long time, and they are shielded, not sealed, but the funny thing is, I guess the reason I had these is these are the exact bearing used on the Delta. Let's take a look. Here I am at the 14 inch Delta Rockwell and you can see I have two of these saws as you well know. And they got a very well designed blade guide and this particular bearing is the exact one that goes on here. So I'm getting some of my ideas from this. However, I'm not going to have all the adjustment screws. That really, really complicates it. And these are also die cast pot metal because they made them by the tens of thousands. You know, when you think about it, th these bearings are being used incorrectly. They are not a thrust bearing, but in a way we're using them as a thrust bearing. But you will see that some bandsaw guides use the bearing in uh, this orientation, which is also a good idea. But since they've been using these in this manner for a hundred years. You know, I'm not going to worry about it. That's the way mine is going to work. I've talked about this before, and I think you know that virtually all bearings are, are metric, so it's uh, 30 millimeter by uh, 9 millimeter, but I'm really most interested in the bore, which is uh, 10 millimeter. 
Now, rather than come up with a 10 millimeter screw, because I have nothing like that in stock, what I've done already in the sample here is to make a bushing that is quarter inch on the inside and 10 millimeter on the outside. Now, there's also the possibility, and I may redesign this, so that this bushing is an eccentric to position this from right to left. Because if this isn't put in the, in the right uh, position here, it's, it's kind of a, a pain, but an eccentric would allow at least a minimal movement from right to left. I suppose that you high-tech guys uh, think of my methodology here as totally archaic and insane, but now since I know the blade is in the right position, that is it's riding in the correct position on the upper and lower wheel. So I'm going to take the bearing and set it really right up against the blade and mark it back here. So I got a mark. I know that that is at least the back position, but I want a little movement there to move this in and out as necessary. Alright, this entire section right here is going to be cut out. So it'll be something like that. But let me explain something to you now. I usually do most of my cutting on this bandsaw. Well, it's inoperative now. Over in this area I have both my Delta bandsaws, but the problem is that I've been making videos with them as well. Now some of those videos have not been released, but the whole essence of what I've been doing over here is converting one of these saws into a metal cutting saw. But this uh, work is not done now. I've interrupted it for this other video. And right now this particular one that says wood only has a horrible blade on it. It just won't cut at all. Not in the mood for changing it. So this one, which has the low speed uh, unit on it with the DC motor, is the one I'm going to use. And I just changed blades, but it is a metal cutting blade. But for now, that's where I will be doing both the metal cutting and the woodworking uh, on this particular project. And I can vary the speed, but it'll be a metal cutting blade for both. But since it's a brand new blade, it cuts pretty fast. With the uh, block back on the machine, and this is just a cardboard shim here, to raise the bearing up off of that surface a little bit, and a transfer punch in the bearing, I'll position the bearing where I want it. You notice I do a lot of transferring, maybe too much. And that marks where the hole will be drilled. The bearing is mounted and there's a washer both in front of it and behind it so the bearing cannot rub against the block. And I think I got it in the right position but remember this is still a prototype so if I need to move it a little bit left to right other than with an eccentric I can still do that. But the next thing I'm going to do here is to lay out the uh, slots here for the steel inserts here. Now later on these can be high speed steel. It can be a 5 16 tool bit. And these can vary in size but this is really just the right size for the combination of blades that I spoke of earlier. This can be widened a little bit. I've still got it pretty narrow. And I still haven't decided and these probably can be trimmed off right here. You see, I have no way of making a square hole. However, I can make a rectangular slot. I don't see that there's any need for little covers over this with tiny little screws. That would be too tedious. So I'm going to have them open, just like you see here. And But I need set screws. Probably one right here and one right here. Maybe I should put them on the bottom so they don't fill with sawdust, but I don't know. Just different thoughts. 
Let me back up a bit, and I may be repeating myself, but I just changed blades, and I put on a brand new half-inch 14-tooth blade. Now, that's my preferred blade that I use 90% of the time, so I'm really designing this around that blade, but bringing, and the, the blade is tracking perfectly on that upper wheel. I just checked it. So I'm going to bring the bearing out, so it just touches, and then the 5 sixteenths blank here hits it right a bit, right about like that, just a little bit behind the teeth. So I will only mill this 5 sixteenths thick, and I'm not going to mill it right in the center of this piece. It's going to be a little bit lower so that I have a thicker wall on top for the set screw. I'll be right back after I've milled that 5 16 slot. I just did something I already regret. I changed from 5 16 to 3 8 and I think on the final one I'll probably go back to 5 16 and these could be a little longer. This is just key stock, 3 8 key stock, but the slots are milled. You know, that could be sawn out too, but at this point I'm, I'm milling wood instead of just sawing it. And you can see those come into position pretty well right behind the teeth. Yeah, I'm almost touching the teeth, so I think I need to make this slot a little deeper because that ball bearing is about where I want it. But you know how it is sometimes as you engage your work, it pushes back a little bit. And then that's when it causes the bearing to start to spin. Sometimes the bearing is just idling. All right, that's essentially, and then of course there's going to be set screws here. I won't do that in the wood. Notice that this is thicker here than it is down here. This block now is way, way too big and thick and clotty, so now I can start whittling away, and the first thing I think I'll do is to bring it down to about this thickness back here. I'll take it off and lay that out and hope I get it right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this piece with the scribble on it, and then looking at it on the top here, this is all waste stock, and this is waste stock, so that'll streamline it a little bit. Then, uh, what I don't like here is that I'm a little thin right here, and that'll be rectified by using the smaller blanks, I believe. It seems a little closer than I want it right here, but that could be milled out. But remember, I did have a shim in there, but I want the bearing to spin without interference. So let me saw that out, and I'll be right back. This pretty much completes the prototype. You can see I've taken away a lot of waste wood. There'll be a set screw drilled and tapped in here for this shaft that holds the bearing. Remember that these two holes will be tapped quarter 20. They won't be through holes, so the fact that we got a little something funky here does not matter. That'll be cleaned up. That could even be a little bit deeper. Again, two set screws here. Let me put it into place here and see what we got. Looking at it from this side, which I haven't shown you yet, and I'm not unable to remove this guard for clarity because it's all one piece. That looks pretty good. Of course, this screw will not extend in the final one. And from this view, everything lines up real well with the blade. Do you understand why I do it all in place like this so I'm assured of things working and fitting up rather than just from drawing? But I, I do not object to drawings, and that's really the correct way to do it. Uh, this is reverse engineering. But that is how I'm going to make it out of either steel or aluminum, depending what I can find around here. 
Also, maybe this would have been just great to uh, make up with a 3D print if I had someone to do that. And if it was printed solid, it might be uh, usable as is and strong enough. I'm not real sure, but probably would be. Well, that's it, folks. Remember, do not try this at home. This is meant for your viewing pleasure only. Edutainment. No one will need to do this. So again, I'll reiterate that I will make this out of metal in the following one, and I'll take the dimensions right off of this. I won't need to keep fitting it up as I'm doing now. Again, there'll be some minor revisions. I have no intentions of making another wood one. Sometimes I might make two, three, four, five, six wood ones, whatever it is I'm making, until I get the concept right. But there it is. Hope you liked it, and I'll see you in part two of this video series. This is a bit of a non sequitur, but this is my Ace Hardware. This is my Home Depot. This is my Menards all in one here. And it has saved me hundreds of trips to the hardware store over the last year. You can see that I have about every kind of screw and fastener known to mankind here. And there's a lot more other places in the basement. And although this is the most convenient one for me to try to actually find things, because I know where everything is, there's a lot more in the garage. I'm not going to show you that, but just some of you might be interested in that. I know that all of you have selections as well.